Hello students. In this video, I will be uh, explaining about the genetic code. After the role of uh, DNA as the hereditary material was uh, established by various uh, scientists, it was uh, clear that uh, DNA contained the information for the formation of uh, protein molecules means for the uh, formation of polypeptides and uh, the polypeptides are uh, made up of a uh, number of amino acids and only four bases of DNA in some way must be determining 20 types of amino acids that form the proteins. It was known that the information for uh, the sequence of amino acids of a protein was contained in the sequence of bases on uh, messenger RNA which was governed by the sequence of uh, nucleotide bases in the DNA. So this uh, relationship of nucleotide bases and the amino acids is known as the genetic code. Uh, many scientists like uh, Marshall Nirenberg, Hargobind Khurana, Francis Crick, all of them tried to identify various codes for uh, different amino acids. And it was clear that a single base could not code for a single amino acid because then only four amino acids could be coded. Then uh, the next option was uh, that three base together code for one amino acid, giving 64 combinations, which was much more than uh, required for uh, 20 amino acids. Then George Gamow suggested that the genetic code was uh, made up of a combination of three of uh, the four bases. Nirenberg helped the codes to be deciphered and it has been proved that a triplet of bases, that means uh, three bases, codes for uh, one amino acid and this triplet is called as the codon. The sequence of codons in the messenger RNA determines the sequence of amino acids in the proteins. Marshall Nirenberg and uh, uh, other scientists used a cell-free system to translate a polyuracil uh, RNA sequence that is a U, U, U and U and U and uh, discovered that the polypeptide consisted of only one amino acid phenylalanine and Dr. Hargobind Khurana synthesized RNA molecules uh, with a definite combination of uh, bases and these were later used to decipher the rest of the genetic code. Now we will see the general features of the genetic code. The genetic code is triplet. The codon is triplet. There are 61 codons that uh, code for amino acids and uh, three codes do not code for any amino acid. So those codons are called as uh, stop codons. Then a genetic code is uh, universal. Means the same codons called for the same amino acids in every form of life that exists today. All living organisms are having the same uh, genetic code. Then the codons are non-overlapping. From the starting of messenger RNA, the sequence of bases read in blocks of three corresponding to the sequence of amino acids without any overlapping bases. 
like the bases from the starting are A U G, then C C A, then A U C. The sequence of codons is A U G C C A A U C and not A U G G C C or C A A or A U G. Then the genetic codon is unambiguous and specific. Uh, some amino acids are coded by more than one codon. So the code is degenerate. And these codons are uh, known as synonymous codons. Most uh, synonymous codons differ in their third base only. And the first two bases remain the same. Uh, for example, GGU. G U U G U G G U C all these codes for valines. Then uh, the codon is read in messenger RNA in a continuous fashion. So there are no punctuations uh, in the in between the uh, bases. Then um, AUG has uh, dual functions. AUG specifies the amino acid uh, methionine and AUG when uh, present at the first position of the messenger RNA uh, thereby it acts as the starting or the start signal which is called as the start codon. All polypeptides begin with the first amino acid as methionine. And then this methionine is uh, later on uh, uh, removed and enzymatically. If AUG occurs in the middle of the messenger RNA, then it will just code for the methionine, the amino acid methionine. Certain codons like UAA, UAG, and UGA, they do not code for any amino acid. So they are uh, called as the stop codons or the termination codons or uh, they are even called nonsense codons. Then there is a principle of uh, collinearity, genetic code works on the principle of uh, col collinearity uh, which explains the specific relationship between the DNA RNA and the polypeptide chain. The linear order of the nucleotides in the DNA determines the linear order of codons in the messenger RNA. In this clip, uh, you can see the uh, codons for the various amino acids. All uh, codons are arranged in this uh, table where uh, you can see UAA, UAG and UGA all in red. They are the stop codons or the nonsense codons. Then there is AUG which is the uh, uh, coding for uh, methionine, the amino acid but which is acting as the initiator codon. Uh, if we know the sequence of amino acids coded by the messenger RNA, then we can predict the sequence of uh, nucleotides in the messenger RNA. Though the DNA replication is uh, near exact and any error uh, which may occur due to the wrong base pairing is uh, corrected during the proofreading by certain repair mechanisms. Sometimes the uh, base changes in the DNA uh, is uh, caused due to mutagens like uh, X-rays, UV rays then high energy radiations and uh, chemicals. So these changes are uh, called as uh, mutations, uh, change the message which is stored in the DNA permanently and this changed message is copied down uh, 
on the messenger RNA. So, a different amino acid and different protein would be formed. So, mutations in genes lead to changes in the messenger RNA, hence changes in the protein structure and its function. Various molecules are required for the protein synthesis. The molecules are DNA, different kinds of RNA like messenger RNA, transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. Then ribosomes, various enzymes and amino acids are all required for the protein synthesis. And the DNA, which is a double, double helical molecule, which uh, determines the kind of protein to be uh, manufactured. So, the protein synthesis is initiated, guided and uh, regulated by the DNA molecule. And the different kinds of RNA, uh, like the messenger RNA, transfer RNA and the ribosomal RNA, all of them are important for the synthesis of protein molecules. And all these three types are synthesized uh, directly from the uh, DNA. A messenger RNA is a single-stranded molecule uh, that carries the coded information for uh, protein synthesis from DNA to the cytoplasm. And the information which is there in the messenger RNA is uh, stored in the form of a sequence of nucleotide bases in a linear order uh, and messenger RNA is formed under the influence of uh, enzyme RNA polymerase 2 and messenger RNA carries the transcribed message in the form of a base uh, triplet or the genetic codon and the base sequence of the codons is uh, later uh, translated into amino acid sequence. Uh, from the very beginning of the proposition of the code, it was clear to Francis Crick that there has to be a mechanism to read the code and also to link it to the amino acid. And uh, because amino acids, uh, they do not have uh, structural specialities uh, to read the code uniquely. And uh, Francis Crick uh, postulated the presence of an adapter molecule that would uh, read the code and would bind to the specific amino acids. So the tRNA uh, was uh, postulated by Francis Crick and its uh, uh, role as an adapter molecule was assigned much later after uh, further studies. Now the transfer RNA, uh, the tRNA, transports the activated amino acid from the amino acid pool to the ribosome where it recognizes the uh, specific uh, codon of the messenger RNA. It is an adapter molecule that on one hand reads the code and on the other hand binds to the specific amino acid. So each amino acid has its own transfer RNA. This transfer RNA is formed uh, just like the messenger RNA which is formed from the DNA template. But after the formation, the single stranded structure becomes uh, twisted and uh, folded over itself and uh, the uh, RNA appears to be a clover leaf shaped structure in a two dimensional form. And in the three dimensional form, it appears to be an L shaped molecule having three main loops and a short uh, stem. And each part has a specific uh, function also. Uh, the stem at the uh, three dash end always has C C A sequence in all tRNAs it is the same. This is the binding site for the specific amino acid. 
and the 5 dash end of the transfer RNA always has the base G, UNI. And one of the side loops is supposed to be the amino acyl tRNA uh, synthetase recognizing region. Uh, amino acyl tRNA synthetase is the enzyme recognizing region. The other side loop helps in the binding of tRNA with the ribosome. And the lowermost, the, which is called the anticodon loop, has got uh, three base sequences which are called as the anticodons that are complementary to the triplet codon of the messenger RNA. So there are uh, different types of uh, transfer RNA each uh, carrying a specific amino acid. Because of the synonymous codons, the number of tree RNAs is more than the number of amino acids. And each transfer RNA has a specific anticodon and carries a specific amino acid. So there are no transfer RNAs for uh, stop codons. Protein synthesis is uh, directed by the DNA, which is confined to the chromosomes in the nucleus. And the actual synthesis of proteins occur in the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Now, this translation is the process of uh, polymerization of uh, amino acids to form a polypeptide chain. And the order and the sequence of amino acids are uh, defined by the sequence of uh, bases in the messenger RNA. And the amino acids are uh, joined by the peptide bonds. And uh, the formation of a peptide bond uh, requires energy. So in the first phase itself, amino acids are activated in the presence of uh, ATP. The actual synthesis of uh, protein occurs on the ribosomes in the cytoplasm and uh, the unidirectional flow of information from the DNA to the RNA to the protein is uh, called as the central dogma in the molecular biology. Uh, various steps are involved in the protein synthesis. The first one is the attachment of messenger RNA with ribosomes and the formation of the initiation complex. Then, uh, second process is the activation of amino acids and their attachment to the uh, transfer RNA. Third is uh, elongation of the polypeptide chain. Uh, then fourth, termination and uh, release of polypeptide chain. Fifth one is modification of the released polypeptide. I will see the first uh, step that is attachment of the uh, messenger RNA with uh, the ribosomes and the formation of the initiation complex. So before protein synthesis, the ribosomes are... Uh, occurring in the dissociated and inactive state. Now for the formation of the initiation complex, all the three factors needed to be present. So those factors are the messenger RNA with the AUG as the initiation codon, then the first uh, transfer RNA that will be charged with the first uh, amino acid that is methionine charged transfer RNA carrying the anticodon UAC to match with the codon AUG, both the, the subunits of the ribosomes are also uh, required. The methionyl transfer RNA binds at the initiation site is uh, different from the transfer RNA 
that inserts methionine elsewhere in the polypeptide chain. Now, in the second step, activation of amino acids and the attachment of the uh, <coughs> amino acid to the transfer RNA. Each of the 20 amino acids uh, occur in the cytoplasm in the inactive state. Now, the specific activating enzyme is known as the amino acyl tRNA synthetase and the ATP molecule react with the amino acid and result in an amino acyl enzyme complex. So, this amino acid uh, which is formed, we can say it is activated. Now the uh, activated amino acid is attached to the transfer RNA. So, the amino acyl tRNA complex is formed. And uh, both the tRNA synthetase and tRNAs are uh, specific for a particular amino acid. Now, the next step is the elongation of the polypeptide chain. Amino acids are joined together by the peptide bond. Between them, the ribosomes uh, act as the catalyst for the formation of the peptide bond. The carboxyl group, that is the COH group of one amino acid is reacting with the amino group, that is the NH2 group of the other amino acid and the peptide bond is formed with the removal of a molecule of water. Now, the function of formyl methionine uh, tRNA is to make sure that the amino group of the first amino acid is blocked and only the COH group of the uh, first amino acid is available for the formation of a, a bond with the next amino acid. So, the chain always grows from the amino uh, acid to the COH end. Then, the elongation of the polypeptide chain, which uh, uh, is the next step, involving uh, the addition of amino acids, then uh, <clears throat> relative uh, movement of the ribosomes and the messenger RNA, uh, movement of uh, transfer RNA from A site to the P site. The first uh, tRNA uh, has already occupied the P site and the A site is empty, which is exposing the codons on the messenger RNA. A site is occupied by the second uh, uh, tRNA with uh, its uh, specific amino acid, which is showing the uh, complementary anticodon. So, the transfer of the first amino acid to the second amino acid by the formation of the peptide bond between them. So, this reaction is uh, catalyzed by uh, the peptidyl transferase enzyme. So, the link between the first amino acid and the tRNA is broken and the COH group forms a peptide bond with the NH2 group of the amino acid 2, COH group of the first amino acid will be uh, linking with the NH2 group of the second amino acid and the second tRNA at A site uh, now which is carrying two uh, amino acids and as the ribosome moves from left to the right there is uh, the movement of the messenger RNA so this movement is uh, called as the translocation. So, this translocation exposes uh, the next codon. Now, the tRNA uh, carrying the amino acids 1 and 2 shifts from the A site to the P site and the first uh, tRNA is released from the ribosome. 
and the third uh, tRNA occupies the A site. The cycle is uh, repeated this way uh, till all codons have been uh, exposed to the A site and the tRNA released uh, comes back to the cytoplasm to pick up another amino acid. So the messenger RNA strand moves ex exactly one codon at a time so that uh, the correct uh, translation of the code is happening. Then the termination and the release of the polypeptide chain. So during the synthesis of the polypeptide chain, uh, the synthesis gets uh, completed when the ribosome reaches the codon signaling the stop or the stop codons or the no, nonsense codons, UAG, UAA or UGA. After the release of the polypeptide chain, the release factors de-link the messenger RNA from the ribosomes. And the ribosomes get uh, dissociated into larger and uh, small subunits and the messenger RNA disintegrates. Then the released polypeptide chain has F met at uh, one end unless required the enzymes detach it and uh, the rest of the polypeptide chain uh, takes the form of a protein. So the whole uh, complex with uh, several ribosomes attached to the single messenger RNA uh, looks like uh, pearls on a string uh, when it is uh, called as the polyribosome or the polysome. A polysome ensures the synthesis of uh, several polypeptides simultaneously. And uh, the translational unit in messenger RNA is the sequence of uh, RNA, which is uh, flanked by the start codon, which is AUG, and the stop codon, and uh, codes for the uh, polypeptide. And the uh, messenger RNA has uh, uh, some additional sequences which are not uh, translated. So they are called as the untranslated regions. And uh, this UTR or untranslated regions can need for efficient uh, translation bonds. So the UTRs or the untranslated regions are uh, present at uh, both uh, phi dash end and uh, uh, at 3 dash end.